So Dollarama sells these three packs of 6x6 six six mirrors for two bucks. So I thought to myself, what if I could use that as a glass bed? It'd be super cheap, and if it broke, it wouldn't matter, because they're three for two dollars. So, I'm going to show you how to try and use it. First, you want to make sure the mirror is clean before you put the Kapton tape on. I'm going to use Kapton tape on top of this because since it's not borosilicate glass, there's a good chance when you print something on it, the print is going to pull up the glass when you try and remove it. So if we put a layer of Kapton on first, that'll stop that from happening. Just going to use a bit of acetone to clean down the glass. So when you're working with Kapton tape this big, it's really hard to spread it on without getting bubbles under it, which you don't want. So I found using a paint spreader works the best. What you want to do is stick the Kapton tape to the back of the mirror as straight as possible. Like so. Then you want to roll out enough Kapton tape for the entire mirror. You want to place it against something you can push against. Because what we're going to do is use a paint spreader to smoothly push down the Kapton tape. I'll take some practice getting used to this but you can usually push out most of the button bubbles. Ta-da! Now you want to make sure you trim off the remaining Kapton tape on the back. Now to install the glass bed, I just use binder clips. Just place her on your bed. and you're ready to go. Now we have to set a Z offset so the nozzle doesn't crash into the glass. So under the printer settings using slicer you're going to change the Z offset. Uh, the glass is about 2.3 millimeters so we can go ahead and put 2.3 mil. This offsets all the g-code by 2.3 millimeters which means the nozzle should print on the glass nicely. So let's give it a try. Load up the file, and print. The other cool thing about the mirror is you can see everything reflected. Not necessarily useful, but kind of cool to watch. So let's hope we did this right. So I think I could change the offset just a little bit so it's a bit closer, but I think this might work. Yeah, I'm going to have to adjust the offset. It's not quite sticking. So let's try that again. Okay, so I've, I've updated the file and I've let the bed heat up a bit more. Let's try again. Now there's something off with my, my G-code start code because it presses into the bed. Luckily the glass doesn't break, but I'll have to fix that as well. It looks like it's sticking better. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I need a glass bed? And the answer is pretty simple. Glass, or mirrors, are, are, have to be perfectly flat, otherwise they'd have a distorted reflection. And if you're printing on a perfectly flat surface, 
it's a lot less likely that you're going to have a failed print because the part peeled up at the edge. As you can see, I'm printing some pretty tall, thin features that might snap off printing on a normal bed. But it seems to be sticking really well to the glass and the Kapton. Alrighty, it's done printing. It's just making some knocks for arrows. See how thin that feature was? It just pops right off. Ta-da! Anyways, hope you found that informative. I've been printing on these mirrors for a little while now, and they seem to work quite well. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative to borosilicate glass, check your local dollar store and see if they have mirrors. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my blog.